So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go one, two, three, four, all the way down to minimum, okay? Maximum and minimum. Now, I know I have the real set on the fluorocarbon setting, but just to show you guys, open up your escape hatch. See, FL, which is for fluorocarbon. So we're gonna close that and it's all the way down. It wanted to backlash it, but the DC stopped it. Well, and a, a well-trained thumb also. A lot of people think that you have a DC rail that means you can't backlash it. That is not the truth. So we're gonna make a few more casts with this. Here we go. As you may be able to tell by the title, Shimano and Terez, 4x8 DC explained. That is one of the questions that I get asked the most about this reel. What is the 4x8 DC? What does it do? Why do people call it that? What are they referring to? And how does it differ to a reel like a Corrado DC or an SLX DC? Before we compare the two or go over some of the cool features, some of the things I've noticed, all the fish that I've caught on it and blah, 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 a ton of other things, we have to get to what the 4x8 DC is, okay? Now, first of all, before we start that part, what is a DC reel? A DC reel is a digitally controlled reel, okay? Basically, you have a digital chip in the reel. It is reading the speed of the spool at one one thousandth of a second, okay? The RPMs, it is reading the speed of the spool. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this up. And I forgot what the antera is. You have to take the screws out and remove this to get to the spool. So while we have the side plate open, you're going to see down here. See how it says FL, P, N, M, and X? FL stands for fluorocarbon. P is for braid. NM is nylon monofilament. X is extreme distance. So you have four settings there, okay? So what you do is you set the reel to the line that you're using. And then you take the actual brake dial. This dial is for the line setting. This is for, this is the brake dial. There's people that say that this is the spool tension. Even though the manual is in Japanese, if you read some of the forums and things online, there are people that said that this adjusts the spool tension, but I do not do that. I adjust it here and here. I do not touch this. So anyway, you adjust the four settings to the line you're using one more time. Then, okay, I just put it on maximum. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our escape hatch, close it. We got it on fluorocarbon like we had earlier at the beginning. Close it, close it. Then you're going to adjust it. So you have four in there. Eight clicks. Maximum. Minimum. Four by eight DC. That is all it is. It's a seven four to one high gear. I've used monofilament fluorocarbon and braid on this reel. You can see it is a bigger spool. It does have the MGL. It does have a lot of features. Now Shimano found a way to bring DC technology at an affordable cost and in some reels. So what they did is they came out with the Corrado DC and the SLX DC. I've used the Corrado DC a lot, just like I have the Antares, but you will notice that the braking system in the Corrado DC and the Antares DC is different. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to kind of go over that. Like I said, four by eight DC, four settings for what line you're using or extreme distance, and then eight brake adjustments. Now you go to a reel like the Corrado DC. It's a great reel, okay? It's a DC reel, but you're going to notice you do not have, excuse me, you have a spool tension and you have four knob adjustments on the side. I forgot to mention, even though I have mentioned it in previous videos in 2018 and 17, you have no spool tension on this, okay? No spool tension and a spool tension, see? Anyway. So this is the IDC4 brake system. You have, where is it? Hold on. You have open, which literally opens the reel. There's the insides of a Corrado DC. Close it. The 
the first click, there we go, is four. Four is for no backlash, as some people call it, but it's actually for flipping and pitching or for when you're just getting used to a DC reel, okay? Three is fluorocarbon. Two is braid. And one is for maximum casting distance, okay? So, like I've been saying to you, the Corrado DC and, of course, the SLX DC are great DC reels. But before you could get a DC reel for $180 or $200 or whatever it may be, you had to pay anywhere from $400 to $700. Another thing that I forget to mention, every time I talk about this reel, every time I make a video, every time I fish with it, I always like talk about the braid setting, but I always forget to talk about what the P stands for on the reel and people get confused and they say, well, how is it braid? There you go. How is it braid if it says P? Because P stands for polyethylene, okay? So again, even though I know I've already said this like four times, FL is fluorocarbon. P is for braid, but it's polyethylene. NM is for monofilament, but it's nylon monofilament. X is extreme distance mode. What I'm going to do in case you guys did not like how fast I've talked about some of the things or covered it, I'm just going to play some of the clips, probably, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 seconds a piece, and it's going to have, you know, the reel, of course, and some of the information about the reel either to the side, you know, to the right or the left, or up in the corner. Play a little bit of music, nothing crazy, but the next maybe minute or so will just tell you about the reel without me talking, just to add variation in content. Do I like a DC reel, which is these two here, or do I like conventional? I like conventional. And it doesn't matter if it's a Shimano Bantam. It doesn't matter if it's a $80 Shimano Casitas, a Shimano Kanan, a Sitica, Corrado I, Corrado K, Metanium MGL, Shimano Stratic CI4 Plus 3000 FA, Second and third generation spinning reel, Shimano Nasi. Uh, there's a bunch of others. I mean, I've used, I don't want to say all because I haven't used all of them, but I've used a $30 rod, a $50 rod, $100, $300, a whole bunch of stuff. But anyway, I'm just kind of rambling. I do like DC reels, okay? I do like them. I think they're cool. But before Shimano started making the Corrado DC and the SLX DC, before they started making it so available, I feel like it kind of had, you know, more of a cool or, oh man, I'm so excited to use this DC reel feeling. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I think it's amazing that they're making it, you know, easily available and very affordable, well, affordable to a lot of people. And I think that's a great thing and I think they should continue that. But I do know before they had the Corrado DC and the SLX DC, like, this was, like, crazy if you had a reel that was this expensive. But, I mean, this reel, in my opinion, not going to be as good as this reel, but just as good. But I still like conventional, just because, I don't know, I mean, like, a DC reel is cool, you know, that the noise you get and everything. But after a while, I just like a conventional reel, whether it's a 6 gear ratio or a 7, a moving bait or a Texas rig, you know, that's just what I like. But anyway, just kind of wanted to talk about that and cover that for part of this video. So do me a favor and leave me a comment in the section below if you have ever used the Antares DC. And if you like the Antares DC, this is the 2016 Shimano Antares DC. And yes, I have also used the regular American Antares that is not a DC rail. I do not own it, but I have used it. And along with the comment about the Antares, uh, you guys can also leave me a comment and let me know if you like the Antares, the Corrado DC, the SLX DC. I don't own the SLX DC, but 
like I said, let me know what you guys think. What's your favorite DC reel? What's your favorite conventional reel? You guys know I love to talk about the Shimano thing. I've been fishing with those for all of my life. I mean, I started with spinning reels as a kid. Then I moved to casting as I got older. My parents always used them and on and on. So to wrap up this video, just wanted to go over the 4x8 system on the DC reel. Talk about some of the things that I know. I'm sure I've missed some things because I always do, you know, Corrado, DC, and Terrace. But anyway, the next video that I have coming up is an aquarium video. Uh, it's all in the aquarium. It should be pretty cool. And then I'm going to have some recap videos of the year and stuff. And I'm going to hit my goal of 150 videos in one calendar year. But anyway, I don't want to take up too much time rambling, just going on and on. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will talk to all you guys in the comments. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask, please.